welcome to day 24. We're going to do Excel 2, part 2, and then uh, catch up. I realized if I look back at the assignment list that this cloud spreadsheet uh, was listed first. So we'll, we'll come back to that today because this conditional formatting part is very short. So bring, back, bring up Excel part, Excel 2, Excel project 2. And we'll finish up that conditional formatting. We're going to spend a little time talking about conditional formatting. So you can do it on a test. And I'm going to zoom in on the part that we're doing conditional formatting for and the whole reason behind it. We want to find the people that have been overworked, that are working more than 70 hours. That's over here in column C. This column here, we want to highlight those that have worked more than 70 hours. Now, I could just manually go, oh, there at 170, click, and then, oh, that one's 70, control click, and that one's 80, control click, and then I could set a background. But we want Excel to do it automatically in case for next month something changes and their hours worked. So I'm going to select all of these numbers, and now we're going to make Excel do the work by going up here to conditional formatting. So we have the cell selected that we want to apply the formatting to. Then under conditional formatting, we come up here and we click new rule. There's lots of built-in rules. We're going to ignore them for now. We're just going to do a new rule. And it's a special kind of rule. It's the second class of rules called format only cells that contain. And that this lets us define exactly how it gets how its formatting changes based on what's in it. So again, we select the cells we're going to format, click Conditional Formatting, New Rule, and then choose the second type of rule, Format Cells That Contain. And now the cell value is going to be less than, or sorry, sorry, this one we're doing greater than 70. Anyone who has uh, their hours appearing greater than 70. Now we will choose the format. This is the condition of it getting a new format. Without adding a format, we won't know any difference. So we're going to now click on the Format button, and we set its background or its fill here, click on the Fill tab, to be a red color. And then I click OK. And it shows me how would the background appear. But, you know, that number is going to be hard to read if it's black. So we're going to also change the formatting. The font, we're going to make the font color, instead of automatic, change the font color to white. So it's a little more readable on the darker red background. And now I apply OK. And this gives me the sample, what it's going to look like. And then we click OK. And we will see the effect take a place immediately those that have hours greater than 70 suddenly turn red. If someone else had another, you know, we realized, wait a minute, they worked 70.45 hours. If I corrected their number, it would immediately turn red because Excel has the conditional formatting applied. That's how conditional formattings work. So remember how that works. They kind of go over this quick, but it's useful enough and you come across it enough in spreadsheets. Suppose I wanted to do anyone who's, uh, let's go look at the tax percent. Say we want to look at specific taxes. Suppose anyone whose tax percent was greater than, how about greater than 24, just for fun here. I would select those, apply conditional formatting, apply a new rule to them, and choose the format cells I contain, and say if I want it to be greater than 24, and just for fun, make the background fill of a light green. And once I apply it, I would see, oh, did, oh, look what happened. If I go back to my rule, if I go manage rules, now that I have another rule, a rule there already, I forgot 24% is represented by, let's go ahead and edit that rule, is 0.24. Now I see anyone, everyone is over 24%. So remember, we're comparing it to the mathematical number. I, 
and 24% uh, is actually mathematically 0.24. And I'm going to control Z that because that's not something I really want to have. That was just for practice of the conditional formatting. This is the only conditional formatting we need in our document. And Excel 2 now is just about done. The only thing we do now is remember the previous one we had a blank row in between the two sections. Well, in this one, instead of a blank row, we're just going to make this row taller. Actually, row 14, we're going to make it taller so there's more white space between it and the table. And remember how we just adjust our rows? I just grab the edge of a row and pull it down. If I want to, to give it a specific height, I can right click and click on row height. Right click row height and I could specify in, I believe it's points, say I want to have 50 points, I can specify the exact height. If I adjust it, I see two numbers showing up. I see points and pixels. But I can always right click to specify a specific height. Same thing with columns, I can always right click, specify specific column width. And let's see uh, what else we have here. We've got our formatting of cells. We've got our titles. I don't think they have us do any graphs here. Let's check on the book here. Where's our book showing up? Let's see in the book whether they have us do anything more here. Formatting. They give you some nice pictures walking through the formatting. They adjust some column widths, making sure, I guess, in dependence, looks like they're centering dependence and adjusting these column widths so they look more like this. Let's go ahead and, and make ours look like that. Dependence. We want to center the dependence. I'm going to go click on the column and center it. I'm going to adjust the column width so I can read dependence. Double clicking fits it just not fine for me. If I click here, double click, it fits that a little nicer for me. And if I want these centered, I can center those as well. Oh, they are centered. Why aren't they centering? Oh, it's because it's a function. All right, and I think at this point, oh, hourly pay rate, I want to bring that down. There we go. And I'm going to control S, save it. Go back and check to see if I've missed anything here. I think the rest of the time they spend adjusting rows, and talking about printing. Oh, oh, I forgot this. We can do spelling now. It doesn't do spell checking as you type. You have to tell it to go do a spell check if you have any issues with it. And that's in the review tab. So in the review tab, I can say, oh, let's go ahead and check spelling up there in the review tab and it'll check from the beginning and of course proper names it doesn't like so I'm gonna have it either ignore or learn it by adding it to the dictionary I'm gonna ignore all the reference to hypermass another proper name I'm gonna ignore all that it's happy with everything except proper names which I'm gonna leave so spell checking not automatic you have to tell it, go ahead and do a spell checking. Good idea to do this on any professional document so you don't look like a fool when you're presenting and they see some goofy spelling. And they'll lose respect for you. They'll lose respect for your numbers because you spelled something wrong. That's just the way people are. I think now that this Excel 2 project is pretty much done. One thing to know in Excel projects, you can tell Excel if you only want to print specific part of the worksheet, like someone just wants to see a part of it, or you want to print out the numbers but not show the names, I can select certain cells, and I can then, when I do a print, I can tell it whether or not I'm going to print the selected region or print 
the whole thing. I can choose my settings to print selection. And then it will print just the part that I have selected. So a nice feature, if I just want to print out part of my table, maybe to highlight a specific numbers or highlight a specific column without identifying the people, just say, hey, we got a problem here with these numbers. I can control P in the print tell it selection. Okay. And so that's it for Excel part two. Excel first Excel project. Gonna go ahead and make sure this is saved and you can upload it then to EX2. Any questions about any of that? Remember the the only thing we did today was the formatting of cells. We're going to practice that a little bit more because that is a little bit uh, less obvious. Okay, and then we'll jump to the cloud project. So saving that and then closing it. And let's check what the cloud project is about. I'm going to bring that up. Nothing too fancy. Here's our cloud spreadsheet project. Going back to your Google Apps account, and we're going to create a worksheet that has to, it's going to look like a checkbook balance sheet. A little more practical, simpler formulas, but a little practice in the cloud, and I think you'll, how many have used cloud spreadsheets? They're very easy, very much like Excel. The menu across the top different but uh, the basic concepts the same. So I'm going to bring up my Google Doc email, Drive, then I do New, Google Sheet, and then from there you'll be you'll see a very much like Excel-like document. Now we're going to create a, a checkbook balance sheet. So a new, after you have to log into your Gmail account, and then go to your Google Drive, and then in your Google Drive, we're going to do a new Google Sheet. You can be in your Emmaus email account, or if you have a regular Gmail account, and I think in the assignment, I'm wanting you to share it with me. Yes. Make, make a, share this document, giving everyone with the link access to it. So we'll learn how to share it once we create it. So back in my drive, you go to your Google Drive. After going into your Gmail, in mine, up on the menu, there's a little array of boxes that get this to our drive. It's a little triangle. That'll take you to your drive. And then when you're in your drive, you do new Google Sheet. First thing we'll do here before we get, proceed, we'll give a good name to our sheet. Let's call it uh, your last name, CS101 uh, Checkbook. Anytime you want to name your Google Doc, you just click on the title and you can adjust its name. You can always go file rename, but it takes you up to edit that. So you can always just click on the name itself. All right, now in our worksheet ourselves, we're going to go ahead and do it, put our name here as well. So I'm going to put my name, Arthur Manning's checkbook. Now, although people don't use checkbooks as much, the idea of keeping track of your expenses as you uh, make them. You can have a spreadsheet like this on your smartphone. There are spreadsheet apps. There is uh, Google Spreadsheet, Google Docs. You can access them from your smartphone. So what in the world would a checkbook balance sheet look like? Well, we want to keep track of the different things we've bought. And if we're using checks, keep track of the check number. So your typical checkbook balance sheet has one column with our check number. 
And if it's not a check number that goes there, we may still have entries. So we may have entries without a check number. We're going to make another column a little wider than the others. This is going to be the description of an expense or a deposit into my checkbook. Another column would be uh, whether or not it's being added or subtracted to my account. So it's going to be either a credit or a debit. And I choose which column to put that in. Most of the time, if I'm keeping track of expenses, it'll be going in the debit column. And then in the E column, it's going to be then what my balance is. And some people have a little F column, which just might have a little mark whether or not I have uh, processed it in my checkbook. And I'll call this, how about I'll just put an X there, whether or not I've actually processed it in my checkbook. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, before spending money, I have to make the initial deposit into my account. So let's go ahead and open my account. And I gave my account a credit of, how about $10,000. Big gift from home, starting my college days. And my balance is going to be equal to what I got for that first amount. So I'll call that equal to what was there over in column C1. Since we're dealing with money, let's go ahead and make everything in column C, D, and E to be in comma format. Let's see, I have format as currency. Let's look for more formats and let's put it in financial format. I don't want currency because I get tired of seeing the dollar sign all the time. Let's put it in financial format. That's hiding there under the more formats. So not exactly like Excel, but in the similar area. Shouldn't take me too long to figure that out. This little menu. Notice the menu bar is a little shorter. Out there in the cloud spreadsheet, underneath the more button, I have lots more similar, again, to the office. And most of the symbols you should recognize. They haven't copyrighted these symbols. I I'm, wouldn't I'm be surprised if the lawyers fought over those. Okay, so let's give you a chance now to have an expense. Esther, what would you like to buy? Shoes. <laughs> shoes. Why, why was I guessing shoes? Or a nice, another pretty scarf. Okay, and that would be a debit, so we'll put a number in the debit column. What would the cost be, Esther? You get to choose. This is Fantasy World. Only 50. She's conservative, even in the, even in the fictitious world of shoe buying. Now, we need a formula here to calculate our balance. What would this formula be? Uh, it would be your balance subtraction by your debt. Yeah, so it would be equal, click on the row above me, and subtract anything that's in this column. And I hit enter. And now we have our new balance. Check number, I haven't given a check number. Let's go ahead and make up any check number. We'll start with how about 5,000? Our first expense. All right, Anthony, what would you like to buy? A new computer. A new computer. All right. So, laptop. Now, we don't have to put all the model and everything. We can say bought the laptop. And under the debit column, how much would that laptop be? 1200 so it's not a Mac. Macs are more expensive than that. Well, actually, you could get a decent Mac for 1200 A very good PC for 1200 And I am too lazy 
to type in the formula again. Since we got the formula right for the previous month, we cl simply click on the previous month and pull down, and I get the formula copied. If I double click on the cell, I'll see that it is going to the cell above me, subtracting the cell to the left of me using relative addressing. All right. <clears throat> Now we've come along and we've sold our old laptop. And we got a measly $300 for it. What would our balance formula be, Paul? It would be uh, balance plus your credit. Yes, so balance plus. And the notice the balance is the one above me. I'm assuming my table is going one by one down. Now I'm getting tired of having to change my formula if it's a debit or a credit. I want a formula here that will automatically add a credit or subtract a debit. And let's see if Hannah can get this formula. What would that formula be? If I want to automatically, no matter I don't know if I, my next thing is going to be expense or credit, but I want this formula to come out right regardless. How would I make this formula work? So if I have a credit, it adds it. If I have a debit, it subtracts it. You don't have to use parentheses. It doesn't hurt. First of all, I'll start with my previous balance. If there happens to be a credit here, it will add it. And remember, if it's left blank, it gets treated as a zero. And so adding a zero would be just fine. And if there's something here, I subtract it. So this is an easy way to have a formula there. And let's go ahead and copy that formula down. So if there is ever a number that shows up here, my balance will automatically update. So now Katie can decide whether it's going to be a deposit or an expense. You get to choose now. And then you get to choose what it is. Expense, so that'll be check number 5002. And what is she going to buy? Books, the very studious students. Going to buy some books. So in the debit column, how much are the books? $100. She got the discount. And watch my balance change. As soon as I hit enter, my balance should go down to $8,950. And notice all the next balances go down. Because they're subtracting, they're adding nothing, and they're subtracting nothing, so the balance stays the same. As soon as something gets entered here or here, this balance will immediately reflect the new value. Now, we can't leave Jared all alone. But I've got to let you decide if you're going to buy or spend or uh, deposit. Um, well, I could be using a phone. All right. iPhone. Yeah. iPhone 16. We'll think in the future here. And how much will the does it cost? Yeah, you got got the good deal. It's like, well, you'd be doing a monthly payment. Okay. And no necessary down payment. So if we do it that way. Yeah. A little less. Along with the phone services, let's go with like 88. Okay, and that may be an online thing, so we'll have to decide if it's no check or we may be put in the account number if it's an online thing uh, or, or an invoice number or something. So we could leave that blank. So there we have a basic credit card, uh, sorry, a basic checking account balance sheet by doing from this cell on an automatic add a credit or subtract a debit and copy that formula down. I could copy that formula up as well just to, so I wouldn't be confused when I look at my formulas later on and the numbers don't change because remember blank is treated as mathematically zero. I don't copy it to this cell because that was a initial credit and there's no formula there it's just make my balance be my initial credit. There you go. There is a checkbook working in the cloud. Let's see what else we can do in the cloud just to see how 
easy it is. And I'll turn off the extra uh, menu there. Let's see if we can do, how about a title? What if I want to make this title style? Do I have a style? Underneath more, uh, how about formats? I can choose my format style. I don't see, I can choose my font and my size. It doesn't have particular styles there. And let's see under more. I can do charts, functions, no styles like I have in Excel. So I can just decide to make my font larger if I want to make that a, a, a titled like thing. Let's do a little coloring. Let's do our uh, maybe a shading of our table here. Let's see, where can we do that? Uh, right here, we have a fill color. And I can apply some sort of fill to it. I can mer there's my merge and center if I ever wanted to merge and center a cell. How about, you know what, there's a column missing here. I should have had a date. Let's insert a column. Oh, I'm going to turn that off. Let's insert a column to the left of the description. Usually the, there's a check and a date. I'm going to adjust this column width. Look, I can adjust the width the same way. To insert a column, I click on the column to the right of where I want to put it, and I can right-click, insert one left. Oh, look at this. In Google Sheets, I can tell it whether I'm going to insert to the left or right. Where in Excel, insert, there's only one insert. It always inserts either to the left or above. And let's put in date. Do you remember the shortcut key in Excel for inserting today's date? There is a shortcut key. Control semicolon. And it works also in Google Spreadsheets. Control semicolon is a nice way to insert today's date. And I can always go back and edit that, and it pops up a little calendar if I want to put in a specific date. Typical spreadsheet, uh, checkbook spreadsheet would have a date of when that expense was made. Okay, so I have a checkbook and it's decent format. Um, I don't think we need to play around with all of these. They're about the same as Excel. I can put borders on things. I can adjust my fonts. If I want to print it, I click on the little printer icon. If I want to turn off, this turns on and off that extra menu. But now I want to share it with someone that can see my spreadsheet. Now there's a sharing up there and there's also a publish to the web underneath file. Let's check the assignment to see am I sharing it or publishing it as a web page. And in the assignment description I see share this document so it looks like a spreadsheet. I'm thinking that I'm going to share it as a Google Doc. So we'll go back here to our Google spreadsheet here and go to the share button. By default, your files are shared are not shared. If I click on the share button, I can enter a specific email, but I just want to make it so I can just give it the give it the link to anyone. So I'm going to click on the advanced share and click change. Advanced share, change. And because, well, I'm using my Emmaus email. If you use your Emmaus email, you can see I can decide just to share with anyone else that has an Emmaus email. Or if I'm using a regular Gmail account, you may only see this. I can share it with anyone with the link. Typically, I don't want to make it public on the web. That just makes it available in, a, in the result of a Google search. So rather than <clears throat> have it searchable and findable by anyone, I only want people I ex share the specific link with to be able to see my file. And I can even change whether they can view or actually edit the file. So this would be kind of dangerous. You never know what they might be putting in there. So I'm leaving it the default, can view. And then I click Save. 
And now it gives me this long, ugly link to my file, my spreadsheet. I'm going to copy that and then go to my assignment and I can close this. I can click done. And then in the assignment, all I need to do in the submission is put in the link and say something like, here is the link to my spreadsheet. And I can't do it because I'm an instructor. It won't let me submit. So add submission and put in the link to it. And just say, here's the link to my completed cloud spreadsheet. And then paste that long link. And let's see what that looks like if I actually visit that link. Uh, I'm going to use a different browser that's not logged into my account to show you what it would look like then from a just getting the link without actually being logged in as the owner of it. When you're the owner of a file, the link will show you the editable spreadsheet. But if you're not the owner and you put in the link, waiting for my browser to Chrome is. Just give me a blank page right now. Come on, Chrome. There we go. Now if I give the link to Chrome, paste. Here's what the worksheet will look like. And since I'm not signed in to the owner, I can't edit it. But I do see the file menu across the top because I am in Google Docs. So I can adjust how I'm viewing it. Let's see if that lets me. Look at that. I can sort my view, but it it's not the it shows me that I'm working on a temporary file now. So looking viewing the link, if I'm not logged in, I can see my files as a nice spreadsheet. If I published it as a web page, which I've done, that's how if you Remember when you look back here at the uh, at our course, you look at our assignments list. That actually is a published Google spreadsheet right here. Your assignment schedule. That's as easy for me to edit from anywhere in Google Docs, and I simply put the link in here and publish it as a web page. The nice thing about the publishing as a web page, it doesn't put that little extra menu across the top, and they can't click specific cells. So if you want someone to actually see it as a spreadsheet, you can share it as a spreadsheet. So this one is done if all you've done is given me the link with shared with the link available to everyone. If you don't make a link available to everyone, when I click on it, it'll say, you are, are, need re to ask permission to access this file. Please email the owner of this. So to avoid that, you simply make the link available to everyone, but give them edit or, or, or view only permissions. And with that, you are done then with Excel 2 and the cloud project. And let's see what else is going on in our list here. Make sure we're caught up here. There was one little thing there, just to take a little quick look at Open Office spreadsheets. All I want you to do there is simply look at Open Office spreadsheets to be familiar with them. Let's bring up that assignment. Really short assignment. If I go to OO Spreadsheets, all I'm asking you to do there is put in some entries with a budget table, get a little bit of familiarity with OpenOffice or LibreOffice. I forget if they install LibreOffice or OpenOffice. So I'm going to do a search here and see what I have on my computer. And it's available for any PC, Macs or IBM, Microsoft PCs. I just do a little search for Office. It'll show me all versions of Office. Should be showing up LibreOffice somewhere. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I have to type in LibreOffice. Okay. 
And it's called LibreOffice Calc or OpenOffice Calc. I'm going to click on that. And we're just doing a budget in OpenOffice. LibreOffice 5. They're trying to look a little bit more modern, but still they're not quite as friendly or similar icons. And I want to create a spreadsheet with just by entering a little year's budget. So I'm going to have a name at the top and a year's worth of month monthly budget table. Let's see how this works. So I'll again put in my name, CS101 OO spreadsheet by, and then put your name. And we're doing a year's budget. Let's see if I control and roll. Yes, I can zoom in. Give you. First thing I want to do is get the names of the months across column B all the way out. So let's see if January and fill handle over, see if it does what Excel does. Yes, it does. It does an automatic sequence of well-known names. And we have an income of 2345 and rent of 456. So let's put in like we did in the other one, let's have an income section. And we have a we don't even have it itemized, do we? It's just a monthly income of 2345. All right. If that's the case, we'll just do that right on that line. 2345, an unitemized income line. And then we have Mortgage, so it looks like we have itemized expenses, so let's make an expenses section. And I'll just start right there. And we itemize our expenses. Mortgage, uh, 456. A energy of $100 a month. Cell phone, we'll just put phone, $80. Auto expenses, 30 And a food bill. I think last time the food bill, did we estimate about $100 or $300? Think about 30 days of food. What's your average expense per day? If you're living off Rama noodles, that could be pretty low. What do you want to do for food? 500. 500, all right, we're eating well. We've got that job, 2345. Might as well eat well. Okay, what else do we have? Tithing. What should our tithe be based on? Make it a form. We need to make this a formula. 10%. And, yeah, if we're doing 10%, what would that formula be? It would be 10% of your income. Yeah, so 10% of income is 0 0.10 times my income. Might as well make it a formula. In case our income changes, we can keep track of our tithing. If we want to be super spiritual, we can make that 11%. Oh. And enter gives our tithing. Any other expenses? I'm going to pile that in miscellaneous. And let's just say, let's just have a padding of maybe $200 a month. Since we're making two grand, let's go ahead and add a miscellaneous about 10%. Use for extra expenses, insurance, water bill, 
lot of the things we haven't listed here, but we're not going to make you go into super detail. Oh, and we want a beginning balance. So I better insert a row above income. Let's start with a beginning balance at the top. So I'm going to right click, insert row above, and let's call that our balance. And our beginning balance, let's say, uh, how about 5,000? Now, since we have itemized our expenses, let's make that title for that section bold by con clicking on it and do control B. And we're going to indent these in a little bit. And I think I can do that. Where is the indent? You usually have an indent. There we go. Increase indent. Now let's make a total of expenses. Oh, and let's indent that since that's part of expenses. And let's put that in bold. And let's see, do we have the summation? Can you find the summation for open office or LibreOffice? I'm seeing it right see here. It right, like, yeah. or you have your so I could do equal sum or I could just let it do the automatic. And just like Excel, it finds numbers nearby that look like they should be added together. And I hit enter, and I get a total of my expenses. Now I'm going to do ending balance of the month. And this is a very special formula. This is a formula I call the marriage saving formula. So you better get this right. Or it goes on your transcript as unavailable not eligible for marriage. Goes on your status. We automatically insert in your Facebook status. So you better get this formula right. Who is willing to give it a shot? Are you worthy? Can you do the marriage saving formula? You need to know what your ending balance is. And then your, um, uh, your balance. Balance, beginning balance, plus income. plus income, subtracted by the total expenses. Subtracted by subtracting total expenses. Is that correct, class? Is Paul worthy? Oh, yeah. What do you think? I think so. Are you worthy? Can you determine whether this is the correct formula? Yes, it is the correct formula. The beginning balance plus income minus expenses is the marriage saving formula. The ending balance for the month. All right, one more thing to do now. We want to carry over our February, sorry, January's ending balance to the beginning of February. So what simple formula do I put here for the beginning of February? Uh, your ending balance. That's it. That's right. I simply put in the address of the ending balance, which is B17. And it does the point and click in Open Office as well. And now I have the beginning balance of every month. I'm going to zoom out now, copy my formula over all the way to the December by selecting through Income and Fill Handling Over. I don't select the beginning balance yet. I'm going to select the beginning balance of February and pull it over. But all these numbers can go over to December. But don't panic if the numbers don't look right because I still have to fail handle over the beginning balance, which is the ending balance of the previous month. And now my totals come out and I can zoom over to the end of December and see by the end of the year, boy, I'm going to have some more balance. I'm going to be $3,000 more. No, double. I started with 5000 So I'm, I've got, got a pretty good... Increase about a thousand dollars every month. Um, it's adding like a dollar or it's adding one. Oh yeah, look at that. So the fill handle over for open office isn't quite the same. Let's see if is there a way I can fix that from actually incrementing each time. Doesn't that that's kind of irritating? Let's try this. Let's do a copy this time instead of a fill handle. I'm going to grab that, that column and 
copy it, and now I'm going to go over to all these columns, and let's do a paste, control V. And I'm going to replace, and there we go, that works out a little better. So the fill handle with, it, with the open office acts a little different, so I can come here, control C, copy, and the paste doesn't do the auto increment. It's like the fill handle for LibreOffice wants to try to increment everything, but a copy does not increment. Glad you noticed that. Good eye. And now I have my ending balance. We will stop there because we are out of time. Go ahead and save this as your last name OO spreadsheet in your CS101 folder. Upload it. Yeah, and then you can upload it. Just a little bit of exposure to the open office version of Excel. It behaves slightly different. I'm thinking of spending more time in the cloud and less time in open office in future classes. Just because it seems like, although open office is great, even uh, people I talk to out there, they're more often using their Google spreadsheets than their Microsoft Office. So I want you to be, in future classes, we're going to be doing more with cloud spreadsheets and maybe even other cloud spreadsheets than Google Docs. If we can find something there that's popular. I have a question for you. Have you used any other uh, internet-based spreadsheet than a Google spreadsheet? There's likely, oh, I know off, I know Microsoft is trying to get into the cloud and want you to use their spreadsheet in the cloud. But Google Docs, I'm finding, is most people are pretty happy with that. And as competition comes out, maybe we'll find something else that is even better. It looks even more comp competition for Microsoft Office. All right, have a wonderful day. We'll stop there and end our recording.